are ready for our next sew along and we welcome Lori Holt to introduce her new quilt. Welcome Lori. Hi Cindy. Well, I love this quilt. It's so bright and happy. Tell us about it. Thanks. This is called the Sweetie Pie Quilt and it's what we're going to be sewing for the sew along. And I love all the fruit and all the centers. There's 12 different blocks. And this quilt um, is ready, available to download on our website, RileyBlakeDesigns.com, and it's called Sweetie Pie, and it uses your new So Terry 2 fabric yes. collection. And your first fabric collection was what? About seven years ago, it was my first collection with Riley Blake Designs. And it was really popular, and we've had a lot of requests to bring it back. So this is So Cherry 2, and it's mostly the same. But it is. You changed yeah. a few things, didn't you? Changed just a few things. Most of the pieces are exactly the same. And then I added a fat quarter bundle. Of this, this is a fat quarter panel. Oh, I meant the panel, not bundle. So here's the panel. So you can see that one panel has four fat quarters on it. And that's one yard of fabric. So this is one of three. So that so adds 12 one. prints or 12 fat quarters as well to the collection and we're using those in the quilt and, for a good variety. And you do need all those pieces because it makes this quilt just pop, doesn't yes. it? Yes. So once you've downloaded um, your Sweetie Pie pattern, it kind of includes all your fabric requirements and also includes all the um, products you'll need to make this quilt. So let's talk about what supplies are needed. Okay. So the pie ruler. Yes, this is the pie ruler and you need to cut 16 slices to make one pie. This is the traditional Dresden blocks, but for this quilt we're calling them pies. And I love that, changing that up a little bit. And then what's helpful also is these um, sew together stickets. And you have your used temp uh, template and you put the stickets on the back because it I doesn't do. slip. Yes, what the stickets are, they're two-sided little uh, like double tape circles and I just put them on the back because we're cutting on an angle and sometimes it's hard to keep your ruler from slipping. So I just put them on the back and after a while they lose their sticky then I just peel them off and replace them with new ones. Okay, great. Also essential to make this quilt is the So Simple Shapes and the, you called these fruit salad. Yes, it's the fruit salad. So we've talked about these before. Um, if you followed along before, you also need sew in interfacing and then a turning tool. So yes. that's supplies. That's needed. to shape the appliques. And then you need your um, Sew Cherry Aura Floss and, and the colors. Yeah, this is the Aura Fill. This is the 50 weight cotton. And see, it matches the Sew Cherry 2. It's the Sew Cherry 2 collection. So it matches each piece of fabric perfectly. And you use this when you're doing piecing and machine, applique. Hand applique or machine applique, both. And, I, and there are is some embroidery on the quilt, and so um, there's our floss embroidery. Yes. So that's a great tool. Last thing we're gonna show is your Cute Cuts Trim It. Yeah, this is one of my new rulers, and this is the Trim It ruler to square up your blocks. So these um, pie blocks finish at 16 inches, so we need to square them up at 16 and a half. And so I put lines across all of my Trim It rulers this way so that you can really accurately you know, line those up with your block and trim it correctly. And then behind all of the color here is the non-slip. So it stays so, in place. Yeah, it stays in place because it's quite a large ruler. So and that's a great tool to have. And you have a lot more of those coming out. So I'm excited about yes. those. So let's get started and clear away the supplies we don't need. Okay. So we have this cherry pie finished block. And in this segment, we're going to talk about how to make the slices. Yes. So show me how we okay, do this. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is cut them. So these are a lot of the slices already cut. Obviously, you use the ruler. And I did detail all of the cutting on my blog uh, to how to cut the whole kit for the entire quilt. So everything's cut, so you can just sew from here on out. We that's right. sew with us once you've got everything cut. Every so Monday. Great. So. What you're gonna do with each slice is you need to make a point on it. So I'm gonna show you how to make the points on a slice. So let's grab these four. And it's been a while since I made a Dresden plate. And so really, you do right sides together. Right sides together and keep this top even right here. So the points are even 
even, and you're going to start stitching right here, quarter inch seam allowance. Always a quarter and inch. And then back stitch, not here, but here where the fold is, back stitch where you stop okay, and start. Okay, good tip. Okay. And I love your seam guide that gives us an accurate fourth inch. And we're ready to go. Now we're going to chain piece, aren't we? Yes. Leave that one. And I'm going to back stitch at the fold. Just at secure, the very tip. To secure that stitch. Okay. I'm going to fold the next one for you so you can just feed it through. Thank you. It's always nice to so if someone else so does all the work for you. Okay. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and cut them apart. And then we're gonna grab one here and I'm gonna show you how to press it open. So you can see on this one that it's pressed open so that it lies nice and flat. So what you're gonna do first is just unfold it a little bit this way. Take your finger and just kind of just with the tip of the iron, you don't even put the full weight of the iron down. You're just using the tip of it to press that part open. Then what I do is I take my finger and put it right here and flip it inside out so that the seam still remains open all the way up to the tip. Then I take my point my turner and take the point and just gently push that point out so it's nice and crisp and bring it back down and make sure this seam lines up with the center and I just press right down on top of it and I say press because we don't iron because it will distort it so you just give it a good press and there's your blade and one pie slice with a point four times so you've got this section, you do it in four Repeat sections. Repeat it four times. It takes 16 slices for a pie. So here's eight for a half a pie. I work with four. And when I sew those together with a quarter inch seam, I press those open as well. And you can see right here, I do back stitch to right here secure because that. I don't want that to come unraveled. It's easy when it's on a curve. So I back stitch and I also leave a little tail of thread and then when it comes time for the applique, maybe you can see it if I lay it on this fabric, I just will take like my needle or something when I'm sewing and just push that thread under so it's never clipped. That's All the way I just tip. push it under and I just leave it. Whether you're machine appliqueing or hand appliqueing, it's easy to push that under and leave it secure. Excellent tip and you've got one finish there. I do, but I just wanted to say the reason I do it in fourths instead of one at a time is because I like to chain piece and it makes it a little bit more accurate. And also another tip that I do is I lay 16 out on my board in the order that I want them in. And then I like to snap a picture with my phone. Okay. So that when I'm taking them off the design board, I remember how, to, how I lay them back down so I'm not redesigning the block each time. So you've got your variation of color and make sure you've got... Yes. Not mm -hmm. two greens next Try to each to other. Try not to put two colors next to each yeah. other at the Excellent same time. Tip. So after the whole thing is sewn together, you can see I press my seams open there as well. And it just makes it lie nice and flat and ready for applique. So we finished this. Then we're going to create this. Yes, we need to cut a hole out of the center. And you'll get this. Yes. You're gonna and we're going to do, do something that. with that later in the sew along. Okay. Okay, so what you're going to do with this is you need to put it face down, and then you're going to take the, the C15, circle. the seven inch circle, because and the so simple shapes. it is the shape of the applique that goes on it. Okay. So what we're going to do is cut out the center smaller than this, but we're going to use this as a guide so that we know where to cut. So the first thing you need to do is, see how I've got the lines right here centered mm -hmm. up? So you're going to Put the first one on a seam, and then you're going to make sure that it lines up on seams. Because this is a circle, you know, it kind of can stretch out till it lies flat. So see how that is all on the seams now? So now mm -hmm. you know it's centered. Okay, it's not from this way or that way. It's exactly centered. Right in the middle. You make can. Sure that's in the, you can. The center. And then just take a mechanical pencil 
and you don't have to mark really super hard and you're not going to be able to see it from the front but you just need to mark around here this is not your cutting line but this is just your guide so remember do not cut on this line yeah you're just going to cut inside this line but it's going to show you you know how how large you need to cut it or how small i should say because if you cut that then your circle would not fit in the yes it, it would be the exact same size so what you're going to do is just mark this around so that you can see it like that set this aside and then don't use great big scissors because you kind of have to you, you know be, be able accurate. to have control yes. over this and what i do is i just pinch it. I'm going to cut inside this line. So here's my pencil mark right here. I'm going to cut a generous quarter of an inch. I mean, even a half inch, you could go to a half inch and it's not, it doesn't matter exactly, but you do want to keep it in a circle. So what I do is I just pinch up because it would be very tempting to just yes. automatically cut yes. on that line. So just make pinch sure it right here. Ahead. Like don't start cutting in from here because we want to save this we're saving it because we're going to use this for something else in the sew along so that's why i'm doing it this way and cutting it out at this point because i like sewing two projects at the same time and you're so. always so clever you have always oh, got thanks. something up your sleeve <laughs> i do i don't like to waste fabric and so i'm thinking if you're sewing a dresden already or a pie why not make two why not sew two at the same time and then just do the simple step right here of cutting out and then we have a second project but the dresden is already sewn just take it so nice like you can see that i haven't measured but i you know i can pretty much eyeball a quarter of an inch and i know this is a very generous quarter of an inch and that's all you need to worry about you're almost there almost there and there you have another um template the c14 the c14 is the template that we use for the daisies but as soon as i get this cut out i'll show you why I have this out on the table so I can show you. Okay, one last clip. So here's this full circle right here. And now here's your pie. Let's set this aside for just a second. And now here, here is your pie part that you're going to need. And you can see that you can lay that down on top of there, see, and there's plenty of for you to get your app plenty of space it. to get your applique on it, and you don't have to worry about that. And then what you're going to do to get it to this point right here is you're going to take your background square of fabric and press it this way and this way. So you know where your, so center you know where your centers are and you can still see that crease right there probably. But you're going to line up. And you like to tack down with glue, don't you? Yes. Or, well, pins sometimes. It just pins. depends. But this is quite big, so I don't like to use pins because when I'm appliquing, I don't want to scrunch it up in my hands and poke my hands. So I'll use glue. And this is uh, Sue Daly's glue, and it works really well. So this, this step is important because you can either decide to use to line up in the cleavage here or a point. And so whatever you do, you need to be consistent with all of your mm -hmm. blocks. So I lined mine up here with the cleavage. So that's what you do here is if you line that right up right there and then smooth this out. I'll usually put it on a design board at this point so that you can really smooth it out nicely. And this has already been done and you've tacked it down. Yeah, so it's got just a little dot of glue. It's just in place of a pin. You don't need to like, so what I do is I pin at bottom. this point, I'll pin. Okay. And then I'll lift up and just, I'll put like just a little teeny dot there. Remember the glue is just in place of a pin. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, you're not in first grade and you're doing this whole thing. You're just doing a little teeny dot right there, right there, right there, but underneath. Okay. Okay. And then that's ready for the applique and we'll do that next week. I'll just show really quickly. Wait. Yeah, so works. these little segments, I'm not telling you yet what, what we're going to do with this. It's going this, to be a surprise. It's going to be a surprise, but I'll have it on my blog, and it'll be another project. But I just wanted to show you that you have plenty of room because we're using this. We'll be taking the sewing interfacing, you know, and doing this, the same thing. Don't do it yet. I'm just showing you so that you can see that there's plenty 
of room, as long as there's a quarter of an inch bigger around the outsides, you're good to go. Okay, so today we have finished our piece of pie, right? Yes, <laughs> our pies, our pie slices and our, our pie. pie slices. And we need to make 12 of these for and, the quilt. And next week we're gonna be working on the applique and how to do the center of your block. So that's all we've got for you today, but join us next week and we'll finish up the block. So thanks, Lori. Thank you.